Hey, Scorpio. Happy birthday. And welcome to all seekers who are tuning in. Um, this will be for November. Only specifically this month, only Ophiuchus and Scorpio are getting November readings. After that, I'm going to start uh, all the signs, including you guys, for December. Reason being is, A, it's your birthday. <laughs> um, and I was able to push through a little bit. And, you know, I just... Until now, I couldn't get myself to do readings for anyone um, because of everything that's going on and how deeply it affects me and to do with me. Um, yeah, so that's just what it is. Thank you for your patience. If you are not patient, I don't care. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> you do you, boo, and I'll do me. Okay. So, Scorpio. Hmm. Message for Scorpio, please. I'm working with the Light Seers Tarot. And if you're new to my channel, hey, my name is Morgane, and this is the Existential Shift. This is where you go to to escape your escapism. <laughs> To run straight into yourself. <laughs> it ain't always fun. <laughs> Sometimes it is though. I try I try to keep it entertaining. I try to keep even the uh, difficult parts entertaining. Or at least so dramatic to the extent where it's it's or it's entertaining now, you know. So serious that it's funny. What's going on with Scorpio, please? The moon. Ah. Confusion, disarray, fog. It's like the world keeps going and you're somehow underneath it all. A different layer, different dimension. Present, but not present. The air feels thicker, right? Walking feels like walking in water. It's harder. It's like all your, um, all the collective's inner psyche and emotion is now outside of us. And it's like we're drowning in this ocean of the collective psyche. The inner chaos managed to break out and become our outer chaos. And it's not just you and your personal life. I'm talking collectively and you're just kind of trying to find your way through this. I relate, Scorps. And Mars is in your sign and you're like trying to walk regularly push through like you would in, if you were walking through oxygen, through air, but it's still as thick as water. It's a lot harder. It requires the simple things, the seemingly simple things require so much effort. This is something that can apply to depression, if that's what you feel. Um, although with the state of the world, Maybe you're extrasensory, maybe you're very sensitive, and you just, you feel it all personally, right? Whether it touches you on a personal level or not, you just kind of, you feel like all the stories are your stories. Knight of Pentacles, the Devil, and Queen of Cups. A lot of um, emotional turmoil, Scorpio. And this is you walking through it as if <clears throat> trying to act as if everything is normal and you're just walking in the field. But the 
there is a greater force at hand that is maneuvering things, um, be it something in your life or be it some sort of an energetic thing. <clears throat> this could be something that you have been um, cut off, cut, caught up with and in for a very long time. With some of you, it's an addiction from this lifetime. With some of you, it's a tendency that has been repeating itself or a karmic cycle that has been repeating itself, possibly from past lifetimes as well. Um, your psyche is well aware of it. I don't know that it's in your actual awareness at this point. It seems very submerged. And <clears throat> you physically feel uncomfortable because it's itching to get out. But it's still not completely out in a way that you can actually face it and understand it. You have been manifesting things from a place that you're not from that you're not aware of within yourself. I made a, a long time ago a video about this called uh, "It's on My Thirteenth Element" playlist. Uh, manifestation truth about manifestation um i recommend you watch it um i speak there about in length about where we truly manifest from it's not from the mantra it's not from our conscious this um wants it's from our very subconscious processes so if you tell yourself all day long that you love yourself but your psyche is self is self depriving that's what will manifest. The engine of manifestation is really in the back of our brain in a very hidden dark place where our inner child is, where our soul is. And maybe you've been wondering how come I'm so powerful and aware um, and yet I manifest the opposite of that which I work hard for and, um, and desire. It's coming through here in this reading that that could be the reason. There are aspects within yourself that you won't acknowledge because you want to tell yourself that you're a normal person. You're not a normal person, Scorpio. You're a very intense um, person. <laughs> and you have very deep desires and you have dark corners in your psyche. And a Scorpio that doesn't acknowledge these aspects and doesn't go there to, to uh, stroll and to explore is a Scorpio that isn't uh, tapped into their power, isn't healed or isn't on the process of healing. You live half a life from a place that is just halfway you. There are more depths there. And that's where your intuition is and your power is. And you don't go there because you know there's something dark there. Maybe there are selfish aspects. Maybe they are, there are um, taboo aspects that you felt shunned for in the past and then you just didn't go there anymore. Here's the trick. Go there, but now you're better, smarter, wiser to know the difference between a taboo that is just societally you know, not very popular, but still not harmful for others. And there's a way of going about things without hurting others while still expressing yourself. And then there's the actual taboos, you know, the thou shall not kind of thing. Um, and you, I think you're able to tell the difference at this point, or, or so I hope. Um, so from that place, go there and be discerning. And be like, this is a taboo in me that I need and wish to explore and I can. And this is a taboo in me that I need to work through. Either way, as long as you ignore it, it will rule you and you will call it fate. There is something very sensual and sexual here. There is some relationship of some sort that that is rooted, rooted in deep desire. With the devil and the queen of cups here. There's a lot of confusion there. Six of Wands. Um, this is someone you want. You really want. <clears throat> because of what they represent. Maybe because of their status. Maybe um, 
because of how they go about in the world. You really like the exterior. You really like the show. You really like um, their mannerism, how they are perceived. Uh, and you're very, very drawn to that. I don't think it's superficial. I don't think it's just that aspect. I think it's just inclusive of, of that aspect. Ace of Pentacles. So Ace of Pentacles is a tree birthed from the ground. And that tree lasts for a very long time and, and gives a lot of fruit and turns into the Ten of Pentacles with time. How does it start? It starts as a seed embedded in the earth and the soil underneath the surface. The strongest things in our life and the most durable things <clears throat> start in the dark. Not like in a insidious way, but start quiet, consistent, raw, with patience. You know, things that start immediately on the surface, like it's the ace of wands, it's 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 fiery, it's fast, but sometimes it phases out very fast. But this is something, and we 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 move from the Knight of Pentacles we had in the beginning to the to the Ace of Pentacles. So if you go through this process of the devil, queen of cups, six of wands, and just allow yourself to really explore who you are and the underlayers of yourself, from there, you can be birthed or rebirthed in a very powerful way that will be abundant, that will be based in life, based in creation, not based in the dark, murky waters. It's, it's, it's where you start. It's where you implement the seed of yourself, but it's not where you stay. It's not what you'll grow. It's just the nature of our creation. That's how things grow strong. Yeah. So going there to those places, this is just extra confirmation, <clears throat> will allow you to get to know yourself better, will allow you to um, redial your compass of manifestation, of creation, of the energy that it requires. And it will work really well if you do so. You have the Ace of Pentacles here. There's progress in this reading. Right, a tree is only as tall as the depth of its roots. <clears throat> You're going through the process of going down to the depth of your roots in order to grow tall. It's beautiful. Four of Swords. Give yourself time of rest, of rejuvenation, of healing. Be patient. Eight of Wands. And then when the moment will come to be on the go and to be movable and communicative and expressive and <clears throat> creative, it will come. The universe will all orchestrate it as a result of your inner orchestration, right? As above, so below. As within, so without. So as you go deep into yourself, things are starting to readjust in your reality. You can't see it yet. But once you're, you've got it, and once you're rested, and once you're wholesome, <clears throat> as wholesome as one can be in this life, right? Then the reality, the outside reality, will start adjusting in accordance and things will start moving fast, but not if you push them to move fast before before it's ready. An opportunity will come just in the right moment, just in the right way, and you will know it's time to take it and it's time to be on the go. Show me more, please, for Scorpio for this month. The Tower. I will create a sequel for this reading. You will find it linked below. Uh, you have different options of watching it, either on Patreon or on Vimeo. Um, and if you want to study tarot for me, with me, there's Tarot Masterclass Bunkai. I created 90 pre-recorded classes where I teach you quite literally everything possible um, from my world about tarot. And there's a lot in my world about tarot. So check it out. The tower. <clears throat> Something is uh, continuing the Ace of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands. An opportunity is going to come fast. 
um, it will require you to make a change that will shake things up. It won't be a smooth, comfortable change. Something else will have to break down for the sake of this to make room. It might have a level of shock, but it's something that you're leading and are aware of and you want. So it's not something hurtful that, um, that upsets. Does that make sense? It's just, it comes with its challenges, but I feel like something sudden will require you to be on the go or on the move or on the change, but it will be for something that is really beneficial for you. And I think also, you know, we have the devil right on top of the tower um, I think something about your perspective on life, could be on life in general or it could be on something specific, is going to break down in a painful way that will be difficult for the ego. <clears throat> you'll have a hard time. Maybe you'll realize you were wrong about something. Maybe you'll realize you were off about something. Maybe you'll realize you've been... Um, led astray about something and you followed um you can either hold on to the ego and make it harder or you can let your spirit um come come in and and be like okay i'm grateful that i'm no longer led astray i'm grateful that i'm no longer confused i'm grateful that i'm no longer following something insidious thinking that it's something great or something like that I'm grateful to break out of this toxic relationship. I'm grateful to break out of this obsession. Um, you know, it will be shocking to the system, possibly on the physical body. So if this is something that you were really into for a very long time that was very meaningful in your life, be it a belief system or a way of life, etc., or a relationship, um, or a habit, it, it, it's it been so embedded in you, so now plucking it out or having that break down will physically affect you. So keep in mind that, that, keep in mind that that's what it's about, so don't freak out. Five of Wands and Seven of Wands. And we have Six and Eight of Wands. So we have Five, Six, Seven, Eight of Wands. Coming through like Six, Eight, Five, Seven. <laughs> so it's two steps forward, one step backwards. Two steps forward, one step backwards. Um, it's an inner struggle that you'll have, that you're having with yourself. Uh, where you'll have to find the inner focus that comes from your spirit. Not from the ego, not from the mind. They'll trick you from your spirit. Um, because there's pro progression and then regression, progression and then regression. Um, and I see that regression, progression coming from spirit and that regression coming from the inner ego um, that wants to hold on to the matrix of deceit of some sort that you were under. Um but this is a breaking free type of reading. Um, this is a step up, <clears throat> an uncomfortable step up, I must admit. But still, you'll look back at this time and be like, so grateful. And we'll see it as a turning point. Um, and I, and I, I also feel like you'll be really relieved afterwards because whatever this is, it's been taking space inside of you and it's been eating you up on the inside without you knowing. It's something that you thought was filling you up, but it was actually eating you up on the inside. It could be literal as something that you thought was good for you food-wise, but then you realize, like maybe you think, oh my God, I need to eat a lot of dairy because it gives me calcium. And then you discover that it's actually causing osteoporosis and it, it kind of takes away the calcium and also gives cancers and hormonal, hormonal imbalance. So you've been eating it a lot 
because you wanted to take care of your nails and your teeth and your bones and then you realize it's actually causing you a lot of damage you know something like that it's 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 something that you thought was beneficial and good and high vibe but it's actually uh really not so that's the kind of thing i'm picking up on <clears throat> and i see you rising above the struggle but through the struggle like climbing that ladder climbing those wands that are scattered and they're not building a proper ladder they're like broken and it's hard and you need to really maneuver and be very very cautious and the weather is crazy and the wind is intense and it's you know messing with your balance but you find your inner balance inside and you climb up and you rise above it and it's so fulfilling Look at the cards. Anything else? The Scorps. Knight of Swords and King of Wands. Okay. So I love seeing a King of Wands here after the progression with the Wands. Like you've mastered this process. You are mastering this process and you're reaching... A really good, great place. Now, when you reach that place of mastery or understanding or um, expertise in this process, when you'll transmute all the confusion into clear direction, then you'll be on the go. Something will come up and then you'll be uh, running for it very fast. I don't know if you're traveling somewhere or initiating something or going after something, but you'll be going after it from a place of you know, your energy is directed in the right place, it's focused, it's creative, it's benevolent, it's not destructive, and from that place, your spirit gives you the go to do, to act, to pursue, etc. Um, I'm going to rearrange, let's see, so we have six, no, five, six, seven, eight of wands, and then king of wands. And then the major arcanas are the moon and the devil. And then the, oh, and, and, oof, and the tower. <laughs> and then we have court cards, queen of cups. Sorry, knight of pentacles, queen of cups, and knight of swords. So two knights and a queen. And a nice of pentacles sits here nicely. Okay, so this is the sequel. I'm going to look a, another few layers deep into this reading by looking at the, you know, what we have going on as we look at the, um, well, you understand what I mean. And then I'm also going to clarify. So link is below. I hope to see you then. Stay magic. Stay true. I love you.